Welcome. In front of me is a Google Pixel Fold, and today I will show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So, to get started, we're going to begin by opening up our settings, and I'm going to start off with the display section. And here we have a couple things. We have dark mode, so you can change it right here if you want to. So you can enable dark or light mode, or you can have it set on a schedule basis, so it will turn on and off automatically. Uh, based on well, your choice, so either a sunset to sunrise or on a custom timer. Now, moving on, we have the colors right here, which allows you to choose just the saturation of your display. I personally uh, like the natural uh, aspect of the, or the setting for most of the devices, so that's what I choose, but this is completely preferential. Now, the difference right here is basically on, almost unnoticeable. If you wouldn't have basically the side by side, there is like almost no difference. The only time you can see it is when I flip it on and off. You can just kind of see just a little bit of a shift in how the image actually looks like. We have a couple more to choose from. You can see this more in the bluish colors right here and in the sky. So there is a bit of a difference here. And again, just a little bit of a difference here. In any case, we can move on to the next one, which is the smooth display. Uh, this is enabled by default and will run your display at 120 Hz refresh rate when possible. And this will give you a nice smooth animation uh, when you're scrolling up and down. Uh, but for be best battery life, you probably might want to turn that off. Uh, so this is just kind of like an option for power saving mode, I would say. Now, moving on to the next thing. It's going to be the option of split screen and also dealing with the dock. Now, this will be more beneficial when you actually have the device open, so I'm going to do that right now. So, um, let's open up some kind of app, and when you go to Recent, like this, uh, you should have an option, there we go, to split, and this will give you the option to split with any of the apps that are open right now and running in the background, or you can also just take them from here or here. So, I just see that I'm going to pick something Let's see this. There we go. Dial are good enough. And as you can see, it splits both of those apps. You can just shift it a bit. Uh, obviously, you can also hold it in your in a portrait mode, I guess, if we can call it that. And we'll switch it. Now, to be completely honest, compared to some other more polished uh, UIs like the one from Samsung, it's a little bit more limited, but still gives you a nice option right here. Sorry for that. Anyway, um, so you can split it right here. Unfortunately, there is no way to save uh, split screen like combos, so <clears throat> you will have to open it up every single time. Uh, but you do luckily have a quick way of doing it by, for instance, getting to your task monitor right here and just pulling something out and dragging it, dropping it, and you're good to go. Now, moving on to the next thing, we're gonna open up settings again. So next thing will be the wallpaper and style, right over here. And in here, you can have things like, again, dark theme, which I already touched on, but we also have things like themed icons, which will uh, change the icons to be almost all identical with the same color aspect or color theme. So you can see them right here. If I enable this, let's give it a second, and as you can see, it changes them. You can also close it and you can view it right here. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but if you have some kind of maybe pre wallpapers that would fit with this kind of specific colors, uh, might actually be a pretty good option. And you can also change these right here. So it basically picks the colors from your wallpaper. So if you have a different color wallpaper, maybe like red one, the icons will be more towards the redder tones rather than the bluish ones that I have right now. And then we also have the grid, so you can increase it, or well, I would say decrease it, but it's already at the biggest one. So let's make it super small. And you can see that's how it looks like when it's super small. Now, moving on to the next option, which is uh, visible from the get-go, we have these two weird looking icons right here compared to obviously the other ones. And if you have noticed this, when you open up some kind of application, this app usually will get replaced right here. Now, it doesn't always happen for some odd reason. Not exactly sure how that works, but as you can see, now it's switched. So this is basically 
I'm not exactly sure what the actual name on it for it is, but it's something like a dynamic app. So by default, you have two of them, but if you remove more applications from your uh, from your dock right here, this will increase as you can see. So now we'll have three different applications that are constantly being switched up to the most recent one. And if you don't want to like, like this, you can obviously just occupy these, this area with applications, which will there then completely get rid of it. So if you put an actual application in there, it stops updating to the most recent one. Right now I have only one, as you can see. Anyway, moving on to the next one, it's going to be the rules. So let's open up settings. And from here, we're going to scroll almost all the way down just a little bit further up. Where is it? Oh, it's in system. So we can see we have the option right here, rules. And what this is, it's an option that allows you to select specific action that your device will take when it, for instance, connects to a specific Wi-Fi. So let's select add a rule right here. And you can see we have a couple options. So we have do not disturb, silent mode, vibrate, ring. So you can choose, for instance, that you want it on silent mode when you connect to specific Wi-Fi network. And for instance, I can choose my work network right here. So whenever I get to work and my device connects to this uh, Wi-Fi here, it will automatically go into silent mode. And also you can change it or you can add another one. And for instance, make it that it is in ring mode when, for instance, I get home. And you can also select it as a location right here. So, let's try it again. Good enough. This will be okay. I need to like select this somehow. Come on. Oh, there we go. Confirm. It was a little bit off the screen. And again, we can select add. And when I'm in that location, my device will automatically switch to uh, ring mode, which is a pretty nice option. Now, moving on to the other options, we have uh, gestures, which is also under system right over here. So we have a couple different gestures that can activate right here. We have things like quick tap to start actions. And this refers to quick tapping at the back of your device. Now, I haven't really been using this, so I don't know how well that works, but for people that might be interested in, you can set it up. So you just enable it right here and then select a specific action uh, to happen when you double tap. Personally, I would probably be selecting something like a flashlight, so I have quick access to it. And then let's actually see how that works. I believe it's enabled right now. So let's see. Nope, doesn't seem to work. Let's try it, seeing what I'm messing up right here. So we have uh, use quick tap, toggle flashlight. Now it has an option to require stronger taps. Now, I'm not exactly sure how strong of a tap I need to do to actually enable it right now without this on. Come on. Yeah, it... <laughs> so, this one seems to be not working very well, I'm not gonna lie. So, might not be the best one. Um, not sure if it's bugged or anything, because as you can see, if uh, literally smacking it doesn't really enable it, and what am I supposed to do with stronger tops? Am I supposed to just take a hammer to it? So this one might be just bugged right now. Uh, I, I did test this out on, well, not foldable pixels and it did work. So I'm not sure what's happening right here. Uh, but usually it would just require like, as I was doing at the beginning, it's kind of like a, a bit of a top at the back of the, the device and it would enable it. Right here, just smacking it just didn't want to enable it. So a little bit wonky. Anyway, moving on to other options, we have things like quick open camera, uh, camera for selfie, uh, system navigation. Obviously, if you want to change your system navigation to buttons or gestures, depending on which one you are using, you can do so right over here. We have the three button navs and the gesture navigation. We also have settings for the gesture navigation. And here we have a couple of things like increasing uh, the sensitivity of a swipe gesture. So this one, you can make it high. 
and you can see that it is increasing and also the right one this will define what how sensitive or where your finger actually needs to be to activate the uh, back gesture so where you need to start the swipe from and then we have also a uh, swipe to invoke assistance so this is a uh, swipe from bottom corner so this to enable your google assistant so there we go now if you don't want that you can obviously turn that off and there's one last thing that i want to show you but i'm not exactly sure where it is so let's just try to search for it mm. So I'm searching for music and I'm looking specifically for, there we go, this one. And just to go back there, uh, it's right here, music uh, setting services. And this is basically a scrubbing tool, scrubbing if that's the correct way to define it. It's a Shazam that is basically built in into the uh, device and not really a shazam it's something from google themselves now when you enable it you will need to first download the database as they call it and uh, not sure if it's already downloading possibly it is downloading something or not oh yeah i think it just finished so what will now happen is whenever you play a song it will show you the name of the song uh, on your lock screen now later on if you want to find that song again you have in here as you can see uh now playing history so you can click on here and obviously it will be occupied with some kind of songs uh and this will automatically work so just to kind of give you a little bit of a, a demo assuming it will work the first time around i did have a bit of a problem at times um let's play some music and see if it will identify it i'm gonna lock it quickly move through it and you can see it's showing you the name right here of the song that I was playing just right now so you can access this later on by going into your settings like I showed you and you can see it right here it shows up it shows you also what time you actually or the device actually heard the song at and you can from here favorite uh, obviously search for it and all that stuff so pretty nice option to have built into your device that is basically always functioning and listening to music so i do personally like that a lot so anyway with this being said this will conclude all the tweaks and tricks that i wanted to show you so if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching